reality is and see this is something that that bothered me when I left the church out of um, frustration because I, wa I wasn't hearing these things because the Bible tells us what Jesus looked like when he walked here the Bible tells us what he's going to look like when he comes back we have taken that and changed it my um, one of my grandchildren when he was about eight years old I have a black nativity in my home uh, that I put out at Christmas and he had been there several times and all of a sudden one day he brings me the baby Jesus and he says mama this is not right and I said what's not right he said this is not right mama now this is a child that every time he's with me he gets lessons in this my son says to the point to where he has to deprogram them when he gets them back home. This child knows where my heart is. This child, but he's, this is not right, Mama. What's wrong? Tell me. Jesus wasn't black. Jesus was white. Who told you that? And then we have this great conversation. I tell them, it's not something you have to go back and fight. You don't have to go, because I don't want them beaten down until they're strong enough to know for what they believe, you know. But I want them to know the truth. I said, in your mind, in your heart, no. Do you remember when Jesus went to Egypt? He hid in Egypt. The people in Egypt, honey, they're, they're not white people. How could he hide that? See, so that we've done that. We've given your people a God that looks like me so that you don't have any qualm about bowing down to me see because this is the image of God I don't know of any sin that we've committed that's greater than that one and we did it with the Bible in our hands when we were beating your ancestors for looking at us eye to eye what's up youtube how y'all guys doing today <clears throat> so today i wanted to talk to you guys about something that in my life has recently and within the last year it's, it's something i've heard getting talked about within the last year i don't know how long this theory has been out there it's probably been out there a while <clears throat> but it's just something that I haven't heard um, up until 2020. So what it is, is I've heard a lot of talk going around nowadays that black people are the original um, children of Israel. They're the original Hebrews and uh, slash Jews, Jewish people. You know, they're God's chosen people. And I had first seen that uh, people had started talking about it on Facebook. And uh, I think that they've got a lot of overwhelming evidence to support that um, theory. Uh, I, I, I think that the world has tried to suppress black people for so long. Well, actually, I don't think that's kind of a fact. I think everybody can agree with that. It's like they, they have tried to silence black history for so long. And um, 
I think that the Bible said somewhere that my chosen people will always be persecuted. And, you know, when I first heard the theory that the black people were the original Jews and Hebrews, I didn't really think too much about it. I thought, well, you know, maybe, I don't know, but I didn't really look into it until uh, just recently I was, you know, laying down in my bed and I, I thought about, you know, where it says that they, they will be persecuted and uh, I was like, well, you know, if there was any race in the world that seems to have always been, you know, persecuted and stuff, it would be the black people. And I mean, it's just like, that's a fact. <clears throat> I mean, if every, um, I just recently learned that, you know, uh, probably about a year or so ago, I thought that America was the only country in history that had taken Africans as slaves, but, uh, you know, my girlfriend had told me that other, a lot of other countries had, uh, taken Africans as slaves and stuff. And, you know, that was news to me. Uh, you know, and it's, I guess that's either, I don't know if we learned that in school or not, but if we had learned that in school, I don't remember learning that. I, I mean, I just remember learning about, you know, the American slavery, but yeah, I was shocked to, uh, to hear that. <clears throat> and, uh, it's like, and I mean, no offense to anyone who had a family member, a grandma or grandpa, great grandma or grandpa, that was in the Holocaust. Now, I, I'm not saying that, you know, those people weren't Jewish because obviously they were. And they were, uh, you know, murdered for being Jewish. So, you know, no offense to them. Um... I'm just talking about the original Jewish people, the original <clears throat> Hebrews. And I'm not saying that black people are or aren't. I don't I'm saying I don't know. I'm just throwing this theory out there that I have recently learned and I plan on doing more research <clears throat> on and uh coming to a conclusion someday for myself. But I just wanted to talk about this. You know, this is something that I don't know if a lot of people have heard. And I think that people need to start looking into this. I think that they this is a very strong theory. They have a lot of uh, support backing this theory. I don't know everything about the support. I just know there's a lot of it. Um... So I think that it needs to get out there and I wanted to get it out there on YouTube. And I mean, and it would make sense because they already have proof that the first man and woman were from Africa, you know? And uh, I, I mean, they have scientific proof. So that tells us that uh, Adam and Eve were black. And you could even go as far as to say that if the Jewish people, the original Jewish people were black, wouldn't that mean that Jesus was black? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Staying focused for Jesus. Thanks for waking up with us. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. 
the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. I, I gotta say this. I had a lot of people come and say to me in my comments, you know, people of color are the, are the chosen people. They are the true descendants of Israel. They are the true Israelites. You'll never get an argument out of me. I can get with that. Why can I get with that? It's just, it's really kind of common sense if you think about it. Jesus Christ himself wasn't white, right? The origin of people going all the way back to Adam and Eve, they weren't white people. We all know this. For anybody that's on here trying to deny that and thinks that uh, Jesus or any of the people in that time were white, get a clue. So this comment is in response to a um, reply I said to him, basically stating that Jesus was brown. Geography wasn't your strong suit, was it? But you're right, sir. He was actually black. It's no doubt that the African American people were some of the chosen people, the, the original Israelites. That's who these people are. Not, not all of them, but there's a bloodline within the African American race that is a chosen race, and it's the true Israelites. These were the true people that worship Jesus, uh, things of that nature. <sighs> And they took it, poisoned it, and now and they killed all their soldiers. And now they capitalize on the information that the, this people, the African race, have, if you will. Do you see the pyramids? How do you think those were built? And who do you think built them? It wasn't white men. It was, no white man built the pyramid. I guarantee you that much. I, I, I bet my life on it. Y'all, stuff is getting ready to come undone, okay? And y'all have no idea what is getting ready to happen. Please hear me and study for yourself. You can think whatever you want to think about me, but you need to study for yourself. Time, the Most High is, he is done. We're about to see some power. Come on, y'all. You got to get out of this lie, okay? You got to get out of this lie. You have got to come out of this lie. This white Jesus that you are worshiping is going to take you to hell. Please wake up. Oh, in the name of Yahusha, wake up. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahusha is an alpha, strong, black man. He is a Negro. He is a Hebrew. I don't know what word you need to hear to understand who they are. But it is not me. I am not a chosen. You can get mad. It doesn't matter. This is how the Most High has done it. I am a Gentile. And I know my place. But I'm called to tell all of these Gentile whites that I know that you are in the deepest deception that you have ever been in. And you have been in it your whole life. And the awakening is happening now. People are waking up. Just ask them is they, if they know that the black people are the real Jews. Do y'all know that? Uh, yeah, uh, black people are the real Jews, yeah. So, because a lot, uh, I, we don't know. They're not telling us. No, because they, they use the, they whitewash the whole thing they, down to make you believe that the blacks were, you know, of no significance. So. And, where, and where are you from? I'm from India. From India. See, I keep telling y'all, people overseas know who we are. I keep telling y'all, but that's, y'all don't want to believe me. <laughs> they don't want to believe me. Sunday, a good day to correct some false teaching and lies that you've been told while sitting in church or even watching movies, um, reading books, Moses, chosen by God, given the Ten Commandments, most of the laws are based on that today. Even your constitution in America, is some of it is based on the Ten Commandments. Moses, born in Africa, raised by Africans. Moses was a Hebrew, an Israelite, and a black man. All Hebrews we're black. I'm sometimes asked, how do you know for sure that the Ethiopian Jews who are black are really Jewish? And sometimes I feel like answering, well, perhaps they're even more Jewish by their origins than us white folks. Because these people go back in history in an authentic way for thousands of years. Hey guys, I'm back. So, uh, the Lord put this other thing in my heart. Um, you know, a lot of things I say obviously is very politically incorrect, but it does not matter because it comes straight from God's throne, from the courts of heaven, 
from God's very own words in his book, you know, uh, to cast down all these lies and uh, people who exalt themselves against the word of God. So uh, there's this topic that nobody really likes to talk about, but it's very well known. Uh, you know, the fact that most we most black women are bald and they don't understand why. They blame it on like, oh, we, we use too much chemicals for our hair, it's the glue and too much braiding. But that's not it because, you know, I, I did, I, when I was in Hollywood, I did all kinds of stuff to my hair all the time. I bleached it, you know, and it, it's, it's just not like that. It's only black women who grow bald. And let me tell you why, because let me tell you this first, uh, this verse her, here. But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given to her as a covering. 1 Corinthians eleven fifteen. So, you know, I, I have such long hair and it grows so fast all the time that I'm constantly having to cut it. As y'all see, it's just constantly growing. Uh, and it says, it is a glory to her, not to her shame. You know, and let me read this to y'all, this, uh, this little article I found. It says, a, st a study three years ago of almost 6,000 women of African descent by Boston University Stone Etymology Center found that almost 48% of respondents had suffered hair loss on the crown or on the top of the head, mostly caused by attraction alo alopecia. That's not what it's caused by, but let me keep going. Given the topic tends to be shrouded in silence, the true figure may be higher. All of them. It says, if we all had to take off our wigs at work, 8 out of 10 women would have hair issues. It's just something we don't and won't talk about. We are very ashamed of it, says Band Bandal, this black woman. So she says, we are very ashamed of it. So see, God's people don't walk around feeling shameful. God's people are walking around filled with glory and long hair. See? But if a woman has long hair, it's a glory to her. But yet this black woman says, you know, all the black women feel, you know, shameful because they're bald. And I, as a woman, can understand because that's part of your beauty. It's part of, you know, just natural women, you know, having long hair. It's feminine. But without hair, you're just bald, nappy-headed, you know, crusty head, you know, walking around with your shame. Your shame will follow you everywhere you go, no matter how much money you try to buy, you know, to buy wigs. But before I go further, let me read to you this verse that God himself did that to you. God Almighty, my husband, did that to you. Let me read to you what the Lord God says. Because remember, there's a lot of these, you know, you will know a man by his fruits. There's all these like black women claiming to be the bride of Christ. And many church people out there claiming Jesus was black. But to their shame, their shame follows them everywhere. You'll know a man by his fruits. Look at Africa. And now all the African women are bald headed. And this is what God says about that. The Lord says, the women of Zion are haughty, walking around with outstretched necks. You know how they're always like this with the attitude, like haughty, haughtiness, okay? The women of Zion are haughty, walking along with outstretched necks, flirting with their eyes, strutting along with swaying hips, you know, all that twerking, with ornaments jingling on their ankles. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord will bring sores on the heads of the women of Zion. The Lord will make their scalps bald. In that day, the Lord will snatch away her, their finery, the bangles and headbands and crescent necklaces, the earrings and bracelets and veils, the headdresses and anklets and sashes, and perfume bottles and charms, the signet rings and nose rings, the fine robes and the capes and cloaks, the purses and mirrors and the linen garments and tiaras and shawls. Instead of fragrance, there will be a stench. Instead of a sash, a rope. Instead of well-dressed hair, baldness. Instead of fine clothing, sackcloth. Instead of beauty, branding. Your men will fall by the sword. Your warriors in battle. This is why all the black men kill themselves a lot. This Because it's God's judgment. Welcome back to On Contact. We continue our conversation about the Israel lobby with Ali Abu Nima and Max Blumenthal. So... You were making the point before the break about how they twist the narrative uh, in terms of the press. And I, I think that what we see from the 
uh, documentary series is that in that they are often very effective. Well, just picking up where I left off, I mean, I was talking about them actually buying support where they have right. none. And, you know, you can see the echo chamber here clearly, but they also, there's also a really revealing scene at the conference of the IAC, which is the right wing of APAC, a Sheldon Adelson and Adam Milstein front, Israel America Coalition or conference. And um, Kleinfeld, the undercover reporter, goes to a seminar, uh, which is off the record, and you have um, Israeli officials sitting on a panel complaining about African Americans and specifically young black Americans being the biggest crisis for Israel, for the pro-Israel lobby. And this really shows, I mean, this casts uh, the Mark Lamont Hill firing by CNN and a really talented African American commentator who spoke at the UN and gave this rousing speech for Palestinian rights and lost his job, casts it in a new light. The Atlantic Consul of the Israeli Embassy says, you know, we need to basically target African America. We need to basically target African America. We need to basically target African America. <laughs> That shit funny. He's he lying. He's lying. I'm, I'm been recording the whole time. He's lying. Black Israelites, black Jews, you're a bunch of Asians. You're not white. You're criminals. I want you to tell me. I'm calling the police. Try to steal my ass. This Donald Trump socialist, the white mascot. You'll never be white. Right. You're a bunch of brown devils, black devils. You try to steal my mother's bicycle. I'm going to even going to get crucified like your Jesus, that black man, that brown Jew, wow. that brown Asian, brown Arab gypsy devil like you from Egypt. You're a bunch of criminals who tried to steal my mother's bicycle. The KKK, the white KKK, I said, well, show black ass. You're a black murderer like your Jesus. My recent work, uh, if you read the um, hybrid book mm -hmm. very attentively, you will have to go to the footnotes. Uh, you will see there's got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, evidence um, produced for uh, black Jewish communities in different parts of West Africa, which are not sort of based upon a particular reading of tribal history. Let's put it like that, but are based from on um, fairly hard historical fact. And the base, uh, this hard historical fact is the expulsion of the Jews from Spain and from Portugal at the end of the 15th century, subsequent to which um, a lot of Jews settled, first of all, in northwest um, Africa, places like Senegal, in the islands, <clears throat> which I'm sure you know about, Saint Tome and um, Principe. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, principally, uh, and then less known um, along the the coast of Guinea, uh, so that in the middle of the fifty middle of the sixteenth century, fifteen sixty to be precise, the uh, Portuguese um, Archbishop of Goa in India uh, proclaimed that um, Judaism was a kind of horrible illness, which was killed millions of people throughout history and um, the result of um, being Jewish was to be covered in, in shame, to fail in everything, um, even among the black Jews of Guinea. So in other words, the existence of Jews in the western part of Africa was absolutely accepted at the time uh, by the likes of the Portuguese Archbishop of Goa. And then travelers, Mango Park is a good example, uh, kept coming across uh, Jews or uh, evidence of um, Jewish settlements uh, in West Africa. And we know from various sources that there were you know, uh, black Jewish communities practicing uh, uh, mainstream Judaism uh, from the end of the 15th century onwards through the next century and so on. And as far as the uh, black Jews that I talk about in this book, because they are the starting point for a, a wider uh, digression or a wider consideration of 
uh, more uh, racial themes, or rather themes to do with the evolution of the race myth, has got to do with Loango, and there we've got very, very hard, relatively recent evidence, uh, because there was a scientific mission to, to West Africa uh, uh, taken by the Germans in 1870, 1871, and they left behind huge tomes in German which describe, among other things, uh, this black Jewish community which was still at that time practicing a form of Judaism. I'm going to answer this man's question. Adam literally means red in the original Hebrew, so definitely not black. Sir, you are correct. Adam does mean red in the original Hebrew. And the word Adama means ground or red ground or red clay. So it's not this type of red that it's talking about. It ain't a strawberry red. It's talking about red like clay. Here's a tribal woman from Africa with red clay in her hair. Notice how the color of the red clay and her complexion looks almost identical. Here's another picture. Again, the red clay and the complexion looks almost the same. Again, as a reminder, Adam means red in Hebrew, red man. And Adama means ground, aka red ground. Put two and two together, red clay. Man being made from the dust of the ground or the red clay or clay is a common belief system throughout many civilizations, including the Bible. It makes perfect scientific sense that Adam and Eve had to be of a darker complexion. Because a couple who has melanin can produce babies with melanin, without melanin, etc. But not vice versa. Hope it cleared it up. Thank you. Is it possible that the first humans on Earth, Adam and Eve, could have been black with dark skin? Let me make something extra clear to those of you who don't have an understanding heart. The main reason I made that video was to show that God's word is true. And how all humans, no matter how different we look, can come from Adam and Eve. Because a lot of people judge too quickly and say, oh, why does it matter? Why does it matter? The only reason it matters is it proves God's word. I made this video for the unbelievers who have questions like, you know, if we all look so different, how can we all come from Adam and Eve? And I showed you in three parts how it's possible that we all come from Adam and Eve despite our differences in looks. All right, this verse is for the people who judge too quickly. Proverbs 18, 13. He that answereth a matter before he heareth, it is folly and shame unto him. If you're presented with information and you quickly make a judgment before examining that information, according to the Bible, it's foolish. If you already answer the matter before you hear it, it's shameful and it's foolish. So learn to have an understanding heart and learn to hear it out. God bless. We, uh, what we do here in Palestine, or as they call it, the land of Israel, is, uh, you know, we've returned. We have a legitimacy because we used to be here and now we're back. But that doesn't really stand any kind of serious test either. I don't know any, any Jewish person anywhere that can trace their roots back to the ancient Hebrews. I don't know any, any Jewish person anywhere that can trace their roots back to the ancient Hebrews. I don't think anybody like that exists. We know Palestinians in refugee camps and elsewhere have the deeds to their land and the keys to their home. I know no one, no one, no one Jew in the world or Jewish family in the world that can do that. So how could we claim that we were once there when we have absolutely no way to, to show that? We have nothing. We have nothing. We have nothing. 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 So we're not really from there. We're not really natives. I mean, we're certainly not Palestinians, most of us. This video is for all of the white evangelicals here on TikTok. I want to do an in-depth analysis of all of the white people in the Bible. Are you ready? Yeah, there were no white people in the Bible. Thank you for attending my TED Talk. So I did a video that illuminated the fact that there were no white people in the Bible. Well, some of y'all got really upset, like this guy. Um, first of all, for everybody who left an angry comment, thank you. The comments really helped bump the algorithm. The video kind of blew up. What was my point? One, the concept of whiteness didn't exist until about the 16th century. So nobody in the Bible was perceived as white, nor would they have perceived themselves as white, regardless of the shade of their skin. The concept literally didn't exist. Two, for all of you who said, what about the Romans? Well, the Romans, what's a Roman? The Roman Empire extended from Scotland all the way to the Nile. They were literally every color under the sun, but they also had a lot of uh, folks mixed in from North Africa and the Middle East that became the Southern Italians. Still not what we would traditionally call white in, under our current perception. And third, 
I was attempting to point out the irony behind the fact that the Bible has been used to justify race-based slavery and white supremacy over the years, despite the fact there's no white people in the Bible. So I've seen a few white people this morning going, oh my God, this is ridiculous, what's going to come next? Over the fact that it has been said that it is racist for white men to play Jesus. Jesus was black, so he should be played by black actors. I mean... The people getting annoyed by this are probably the same people that call, who were absolutely outraged by the fact that Disney decided to cast a black actress for The Little Mermaid. So Disney aren't allowed to make what was a white mermaid on screen be played by a black actress, but it's okay for the Lord and Saviour to be whitewashed. Whilst the rest of the people with the same coloured skin as him get oppressed for century, sold as slaves, segregated, treat as lesser people. And you're annoyed. That right there is white privilege. I'm gonna get killed for this one, but whatever. Jesus was black. He wasn't white. He was a person of color. Get over it, Christians. Get over it, Christians. Get over it, get over it, get over it, get over it. Get over it, Christians. No Nuance November, Christian Edition, Part 3. Every single church, and by extent every single person, is going to have a different perception of the Bible. It's been that way since Martin Luther posted that shit on the church doors and said that the Catholic Church was being manipulative. So everyone started looking at the Bible in a more personal and reflective way. No matter what kind of believer you are in the Bible or how much you know about it, it's really important to understand the context of the Bible and from the time period it was made in, as well as the original language it was meant, written in, especially if you're going to be literal about it. Hate to burst your bubble, but Jesus was black, and he's been described as so multiple times. If you don't believe me, putting him in the Middle East at that time period, he was at the very least brown. A friend of mine says to me, he says, you ever notice that conservative Christians six days a week bash and hate liberals and on the seventh day they go in and worship one? Well, I got to thinking about it and you know how things change over time. Well, you know, like Batman started like this and then he changed to this. Then Jesus starts out like this. But over time he starts to look like this now. He started out this really humble servant of the oppressed and all the downtrodden and would do anything humbly to take care of them. And now he's turned into this dude that stands for gun rights, prosperity gospel, of course, anti-science, limited government, only help the wealthy but not the poor, and a fierce nationalist. And these transformations are probably the strangest of all transformations of characters ever in our history. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm not even going to take this one. I'm going to leave this up to my black Hebrew brothers. You can take it. I'm going to leave this up to my tribe of Judah brothers. Y'all can take it. But while I have you all here, I will say, it always amazes me when this topic comes up, how adamantly some people want to argue against the fact that Christ could have been black. I mean, the whole world over, if you're a darker shade of brown, you get assigned black. But as soon as I say it was Christ, y'all turn into some color shade experts like you're renovating a kitchen backsplash. Excuse me, that's not black. This color's called mochaccino creme brulee. Like, like, so triggered. Like, why not just go, hey, it doesn't matter what color he was. If I believe in him, that doesn't matter. All men are created equal. That's the reality, and yet, you'll have such a hard time just accepting it. Be better. Accept that big black man into your heart. Recently in a video, I made the statement that Jesus was black, and I'm surprised how many people are still like, what, wait a minute, what, what the hell are you talking about? Let's review, shall we? We know he was born and raised in an area that would have at the very least made him very dark-skinned Middle Eastern. And in Revelations, he's described as having hair like wool and skin like burnished bronze. So that certainly isn't a blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy who looks like he should be singing for the Bee Gees. But one comment was interesting. A guy asked, well then why throughout history is he depicted as white? Well, let's look at that. Most of those depictions trace back to Leonardo da Vinci. Pope Alexander VI commissioned him to paint a likeness of Jesus, and da Vinci asked for a model. The Pope recommended his illegitimate son, Sassati Boria, 
Sassati was an interesting dude. For one, he was reportedly the gay lover of da Vinci. He also loved to brag about repeatedly having sex with his own sister. And most depictions of Christ after were based on that painting. So that picture in your grandma's house is based on a gay bastard who liked incest. Hi, how you doing? My name is Sean Brady, and um, I want to pose a question to all the teachers out there, all the spiritual leaders, and all of our leaders. And the question is, who are God's chosen people? And I want to know what your thoughts are, what you believe, what you can prove. See, I've been doing a lot of reading, and um, I'm starting to believe that God's chosen people are not the Jews. Right? I'm starting to believe that the chosen people of the Lord's are the black race. They've been persecuted and kept in the dark a long time, so. I'm hoping that you can answer that question and get back to me. I want to respond to Hood News. I think you're on the wrong, the right track. Based on the things that I've been reading, I, I think that um, I think you really like are on the right track, and you know I haven't been able to prove it yet, but. There's certain passages in the Bible that refer to God's children as being black. Um, one in particular is a song to Solomon, where it physically describes Solomon and the woman that supposedly loves him. So, and I think you're right. I think we need to teach everyone. I think that the it's a shame what has happened. I think that the black race has been kept in the dark, been depleted and robbed of their wealth. I think that they've been robbed of their integrity, their self-esteem. I think that that was all by design. I mean, after all, if you are God's chosen people, why would Satan want you to be intelligent? So... And this isn't to create controversy or anything like that. I, you know, I'm I'm trying to find out. Also, I'm trying to learn. I'm gonna make this video. I don't know if they're gonna delete it or not. I put it in a comment and it was deleted in the matter of seconds. So, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> what the comment was is, <sighs> I was addressing the African American community. To tell them the truth that I had found. I didn't know the truth. And a lot of white people um, cannot accept it. Because it truly does cut like a, a knife. It truly does cut. Um, and I myself ran away from the truth. And faced Yah's wrath for running away from that truth. And he brought me to my knees into repentance. For what my ancestors have done. And what they are doing today. I mean to... The point I was losing my, I was vomiting and I, I'm not going to go in great detail, but I mean, he brought me to my knees and had me to the point that I was doing that and in the middle of it, I'm apologizing him and thanking him at the same time. Um, it's, how's that real and that serious? Uh, my name is Marie and, um. I have something that's really, I have to get it out. The daughter's telling me something I need to share. I need you to listen with open ears and open mind, okay? This is from the Lord. I uh, was watching some clips on um, what people are calling a hate group, um, the Hebrew Israelites that are that were protesting, um, and uh, while I don't agree with the language and the form of um, the anger 
um, but they were speaking truth. The Hebrew Israelites, God's chosen people, are what we call African American. Okay, they're not African and they're not American. They are God's chosen people. Deuteronomy 28. I remember it clearly. I read it. I looked up and I said, "Wow, really? Wow, this is awesome." I was like, "I know the only people that fit what's in this book of who it says that the true house of Israel is the lost tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. They're lost. You know, they say they're scattered. We don't know who they are. I know who they are. It's who clear. Are they? It's you guys." It's what do you mean by you guys? The folks that were sent through the transatlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. The folks that are still in the lands of their captivity. Israel is in the lands of their captivity. There is no creation of the so-called Jewish state of Israel in 1948. That does not fit prophecy. So, um, I lost a lot of faith during that time and, and pretty much walked away from, from, like, deep down inside, I knew I still believed, but I... I was done with going to church. There was too much hypocrisy and I didn't, it didn't feel right. So late in 2016 um, is when I hear that the black people brought here on the slave ships could possibly be the same people that the whole Old Testament is written about, the Israelites. And so I started to research that and read and watch videos and read things online. And it, especially after reading Deuteronomy chapter 28, um, the first half of the chapter is the, is the blessings that Israel will receive if they just keep the commands. That's all they had to do. And then the, um, the second half is the, the curses that are going to fall on them if they don't keep the commands. Please go read those. Go read those and think about what these people have been through since day one of arriving in this country as slaves. And you, um, uh, just make up your own mind and pray about it and see where the Father leads you on that. That's all I can say. Um, for me, personally, this is my journey. And for me, it brought the scriptures alive to me. Like, I believed it. Like, these are, to me, his people that um, are still living this curse. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, 
what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments! and his ways pass finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counsellor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory for ever. Amen.